Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again. And I want to welcome everybody back to another Eddie Murphy review. And today, I'm going to be reviewing um, actually Eddie Murphy's first sequel. Yeah, it is his first sequel. And it is Beverly Hills Cop 2, which I actually enjoy this the most. This is my favorite Beverly Hills Cop movie. Um, I think it's superior to the first movie in every way. I think it's funnier than the first movie. I It definitely has more action than the first movie, which I like. And even though it didn't make as much money as the first one, and I know Eddie Murphy does not like it, whatever. Uh, Ed, I love you, but I disagree. It is still a solid sequel. And again, it is my favorite of the Beverly Hills Cop movies. Um, but yeah, I again, I've always enjoyed this more than the first one ever since. Um, actually, the uh, all three of these movies I, I used to watch on TV a lot. But this one, I think the first time that I saw this one completely, I think I rented it from Blockbuster, if I'm not mistaken. And then I got this DVD um, where my grandmother lives. There used to be a, uh, at the outlets, there used to be a, a music store, music movies and all that. And I think I got this there, if I'm not mistaken, way back in the day. But uh, the first one and the third one I actually got at Walmart out of the $5 bin. But uh, Beverly Hills Cop 2, for some reason, I could not find anywhere. Um, but I, yeah, I think I got it at the, uh, the, there was like a movie music store. And I got, I actually got a number of movies there back in the day. But yeah, but yes, Beverly Hills Cop 2, Eddie Murphy's first sequel, actually. Um, and again, I just really, really enjoy this movie. Um, it's really, like, I, I don't know what my favorite Eddie Murphy movie is. I really don't. Um, it's really hard to pick one right now. Maybe after I'm done doing all these reviews, I could kind of figure it out. But this is up there. Um, this is definitely, you know, my favorite. It's always been my favorite Beverly Hills Cop. If I, you know, yeah, it's always been. It's always been my favorite because again, it. I think it's funnier than the first movie. I really do. Um, especially the camaraderie part between, uh, Axel and, and Taggart and Billy, you know, because they seem like genuine friends. They really do seem like genuine friends in the movie, you know, and they use the experience from the first movie. And then in between, cause you see the picture of them where they went fishing, um, you know, just. How fuck, dude? How could I forget about talking about Ronnie Cox in the first movie? Fuck, man! Like, ugh. I completely for I blanked on on. I don't know why. And his name. Okay, well, his name is not anywhere on the DVD, but it is on this one. I don't know why they didn't put it on the other one. I don't fucking. That kind of pisses me off a little bit. Um. Yeah, so I'll have to talk about Ronnie Cox more in this one. Um, but, like I was saying, you know, it feels like they've been friends for, like, a long time. Their chemistry's better. Uh, the dialogue, you know, because they're in the first one, they were at odds in the beginning, and then they slowly became, you know, partners. But in this one, you know, they're friends. They generally care for each other. You know, they want to... They want to do the right thing and get the bad guys in this one. But this movie, even the stuff with when it's just Eddie, you know, in the beginning and stuff, it's still really funny. The dialogue is better, and I'm sure that a lot of it was improvised. And, you know, they, you know, they were able to kind of go to town a little bit, so to speak, more so in this one. Um, but, yeah, I, I think this one is a lot funnier. And, again... There's way more action in this movie, which I like. Um, Tony Scott directed this one. May he rest in peace. Um, of course, the year before this, he did Top Gun, which was a huge hit. But 
you know, right from the get go, there's a, you know, the movie opens up with a jewelry store robbery, you know, and then it goes into, uh, you know, then they're like in a gun club. So there's a little bit of shooting in there, not like action wise, but you know, um, there's a little bit of, you know, gunplay in there. Um, there's the little shootout outside the, the bar when the bad guys are tracking them. Um, you know, the scene with the dump truck was cool and that chase scene there. Um, and when they're at the racetrack and then the ending where they're having this gigantic shootout in these oil fields. Um, the movie, yeah, definitely has more action in it, but it's a, you know, the writing is still really good. Like the story I still like, which this time around, um, Bogomil, who is played by Ronnie Cox, who I completely forgot to talk about in the first movie, shame on me. Um, he's working on this case. They call it the alphabet crimes because at the scene of each of the crimes, the villains put a letter there, you know, letting them know. And he's working on it. Uh, he can't break it. And the the bad guys set him up and shoot him, and he's in critical condition and stuff. So Axel goes out to uh, Beverly Hills to get involved and find out who shot his friend and bring these, you know, criminals down, you know. And that's it. I mean, that is that is the story. You know, Axel's back. Um, and this time they're going deep, deep, deep undercover, which I love that. Um, and just great stuff. And, oh, my God, how could I forget? Oh, man, I am such a doofus. I completely for I'm sitting here thinking, and I completely forgot to talk about the police inspector. Oh, man, I am. Ugh, what is going on with me? Because I, Well, I guess because in the first movie, he doesn't have that big of a part. In this movie, he has a bigger part, which I like. And then, of course, in the third movie, he dies, which I wasn't, you know, which I get why they did it, but I would rather they had not do it that way. His name isn't even on the thing, but I completely forgot. Oh, my God. Um, But, yeah, I mean, it's a, you know, the story's good. The writing, you know, when they're trying to figure out the bad guys and stuff, all that is good. I think it, you know, it's, it's a, it works at least in my opinion. Um, and again, the action is, is really good. It's really funny. I mean, the humor is still there. So it took, you know, everything that worked in the first movie and built off of that, which is how good sequels work. You know, this is definitely a solid sequel and it's my favorite. Again, it's always been my favorite Beverly Hills cop movie. You know, I've always enjoyed this one the most because of that. It took everything that people liked about the first movie, that I liked about the first movie, and it just made it better. And again, in my opinion, it made it better. It made it a better movie. You know, I think it's funnier. You know, the action's bigger. And the cast is, there is a phenomenal cast in this movie. Not only do you get the, the principals from the first movie, Eddie Murphy, I think, is better in this one. John Ashton, Judge Reinhold, definitely better. Uh, Jurgen Prochnow is the, the lead villain. I thought he was great. Um, Brigitte Nielsen is in it as well. Of course, she was married to Stallone at the time. You know, she was good. Ronnie Cox comes back from the first movie. I thought he was great. Uh, Paul Reiser has a bigger part in this one. Um, the guy that played the police captain who actually was a real Detroit cop at the time. And he ended up becoming uh, city council, the, the president of city council. He, you know, is in all three of these movies. Um, it's the only movies that he did. Uh, Gil Hill is his name. Gil Hill. Yeah, he was actually a real uh, Detroit cop. And I don't know, like, I would love to hear the story of how he got involved with the movies. Um he got a lot of offers to do more movies, but he didn't do it. He only ever did the Beverly Hills Cop movies. Um, he actually, sadly, he actually passed away a number of years ago. Well, about six years ago now, I was reading, um, which I did not know that. But yeah, he ended up passing away. But he's great. Also, um, Robert Passatorelli from Eraser and Striking Distance is in the movie. He's in the beginning. He has since passed away as well. Um, and then Frank Pesh comes back from the first movie. 
which was cool. Uh, Gilbert Gottfried has a small part in this movie, which was really funny. Um, his, I don't know why his name's not on the back, but Dean Stockwell from Quantum Leap, he's one of the villains. Um, so there is a phenomenal cast in this movie. Uh, Harold Faltermeyer came back to do the music, which I really like the score for this one. I do have the soundtrack as well. Uh, Shakedown is on there. Shakedown, take down, break down. Everybody walks into a crowd and laugh, which was actually Bob Seger's first number one song. Um, <clears throat> I love Bob Seger. He's a great musician. And not only was it his first number one song, but it was nominated for an Oscar and a Grammy. I don't know if it didn't win the Oscar, but I think it might have won a Grammy. I'm not sure on that. But uh, very, very cool nonetheless. And there is actually a little featurette about that song on here. Um, the other song that's in that I really like is There's Got to Be a Better Way. That's a really good song. Um, you know, I, yeah, this movie, again, Tony Scott, you know, one of great director. I I miss Tony Scott. The circumstances were I remember when he passed were were extremely sad. Um you know, I just wish he could have got help and got better, but sometimes it's too late, unfortunately. But I still enjoy his films very much. Um and this is actually one of my favorite of his movies. It's right up there. And again, Tony Scott, it's hard to pick. Um, you know, Last Boy Scout, this movie, um, you know, so many great films that he did. Uh, I wish he was still making great movies, but unfortunately, no. Um, but yeah, and Eddie Murphy actually wrote the story to this as well. So I don't know why he doesn't like it, but oh well, I'll get more into that in a minute here. But yeah, I mean, this movie's top shelf. It's top notch, without a shadow of a doubt. You know, definitely, again, and this was, you gotta remember, this was the 80s. This was sequel mania. Um, but, you know, this is definitely one of the better sequels out there, at least in my opinion. And nobody ever brings this movie up. I never hear people talk about Beverly Hills Cop 2. I hear people talk about the third one, because they bitch and complain about it. Um, but I don't think it's that bad. It definitely has a lot of issues, but I don't think it's one of the worst sequels ever made. Um, I've definitely seen Beverly Hills Cop 3 on a lot of, of those type of lists, you know, worst sequels ever made, but I would not put it on a, on a list of worst sequels ever made. That's just me. That's just my opinion. Um, but I never, this movie doesn't even get a mention anymore, which is weird because when this came out, it was a big hit. It did not make as much as the first movie, but it was a big hit. Um, and I forgot to mention this, but the first movie was actually the highest rated or the highest grossing R-rated movie until uh, The Matrix Reloaded came out in 2003, which is very cool. But yeah, um, the first Beverly Hills Cop, it made over $300 million in 1984. So there you go. Um, but this was a big hit when it came out. The reviews were mixed. You know, people people liked it. People didn't like it. Um, but it made it made some really good money. It made about as half as the first one, which I guess, from what I read and stuff, is what they expect a sequel to do. Um, but it was still very successful in 1987 at the box office. It was it was a big hit back in the day. Um, but yeah, I don't know why this movie does not get talked about more. It's very underrated, in my opinion. Um, again, my favorite Beverly Hills Cop movie. Uh, definitely one of my favorite Eddie Murphy movies. And again, it's a it's a good mix. It shows that Eddie can do action and comedy. Which I know was one of the issues with the third movie. Because they took it too seriously. Um but the first two are still really funny. You know, after all these years, they're still really funny. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think Eddie gets to be funnier in this one. I mean, right from the get-go, from the beginning, when he's talking to Robert Passatorelli, you know, I need more credit cards. When you need them, I need them in three hours. Look, the titty woman ain't happy. You know, like, don't worry about the titty woman. Like, that shit's funny. And, 
Um, you know, I don't, I don't do business with cops. This guy's a cop. And I know a cop when I see one because I used to be Muslim and I can smell pork. And yeah, pork. Yeah. Allah Akbar. And he fucking just walks away. Like you could tell. And in the first one, I mean, they definitely let him go. But it seemed like in this one, they just let Eddie go more and more and more. Um, you know, Axel Foley, building inspector. No, this is wrong. This is the wrong plans. They don't want Eddie right size in the house. But that's wrong. I don't care. They're paying for it. You know, it's just. He takes over this house. Look, get it. Look, get a drink. You know, there's beer in the fridge. You can go behind the bar. There's some swimming trunks. Look, look at the titties on TV. Like it's just, it's just hilarious. The scene at the Playboy Mansion is great. What do you do? Follow your dick. Beep 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 beep. beep. I I'm the pool guy. But the pool was clean yesterday. Well, there was an accident. What do you mean there was an accident? Do I have to spell it out for you? Somebody did something in the pool, and I got to go in there and clean it. You know, uh, Hef, I, I love your magazines. And, you know, I, I guess Hef was a big fan of the first movie, and he allowed him to come to the mansion and stuff, so that's really cool. Um, you know, but, you know, that, that scene's hilarious. Chris Rock is actually the, uh, the valet. It was one of his first movies, which is cool. Um, you know, Billy, who do you think you are? Clint Eastwood? Dirty Rosewood? I need authorization. Ba -ba -ba. Authorize! Like, great stuff. Uh, and yeah, Judge Reinhold gets to have a lot of fun. I mean, he's got a Rambo poster in his house. He's got a, a Dirty Harry poster, a Cobra poster. Um, he's got all these guns. He's wearing a trench coat at the end, like a John Woo movie. He's got these double shotguns, like... It's just really, really funny. Really good stuff. Um, John Ashton gets to be funny as well. You know, he's going through a divorce, so he's more stressed out. And, you know, they go into the strip club and they're telling everybody he's former president Gerald Ford. And he's dressed up like he's going golfing and shit. And he's like, smiling, like, hey, I look good. And they're like, no, you don't. Like, just great, great stuff. You know, this movie sequel is definitely chock full of, of great dialogue, great humor. Um, again, the action, the movie starts off with a, a jewelry store robbery and the, the music, bum, 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 just awesome. Um, you know, the, the scene with the dump truck and, and they're chasing after the bad guys. Um, and then the stuff at the racetrack, the ending, they have this gigantic shootout and there's you know, rocket launchers and, you know, uh, Judd, uh, John Ashton kills Brigitte Nielsen. He goes, women, you know, great, just great stuff. Really great stuff in, in this movie. And, you know, they really, you know, I know I say this all the time, but they definitely don't make movies like this anymore. Why? I don't know. I don't know what the hell happened. I don't know why Hollywood got their heads so far up their fucking asses that if they stop short, they'll taste what they had for breakfast. But, you know, I truly miss movies like this. You know, action comedies like this with a solid cast, great practical stunts and explosions, you know, great scripts, you know, fun dialogue. And people can say whatever they want about all three of these movies. I'm sure there's people out there now that shit on these movies, but you know, these were big deals. Even the third one, when the third one came out, it was still kind of a big deal back in the day. You know, people were really looking forward to it. Um, the third one is nowhere nowhere near as good as the first two. That's just me. Um, but, you know, this movie is fucking kick-ass. This movie's solid. A gr again, a great sequel. Um, why it it's, you know not talked about is beyond me. And I, I did find a little interview with Eddie Murphy where he talked about, he was like, well, it's the first mediocre sequel in history that made more, that was a hit. He goes, it was not as good as the first one. I just, Eddie, I love you, but I disagree. I really do because I think this is better than the first movie. Um, again, it's my favorite. It's always been my favorite. I know I keep saying that, but I can't harp. I can't stress that enough that this movie kicks all kinds of ass. It really does. Um, 
you know, it's it's a really good sequel. I know that one of the ideas they wanted him to go to England, which they ended up thinking about doing for the third movie, but it never happened. But I mean, it's called Beverly Hills Cop. It kind of has to take place there, at least in my opinion. Um, and then they wanted to do a TV series, but Eddie didn't want to do a TV series, and then he didn't want to go to Europe for a couple of months. Um, but I I like the idea. I really like the idea that they ended up doing. And visually, I do think this movie looks better. The cinematography and stuff looks better in this one. It's very sleek and, and stylish, and it just looks looks really good, in my opinion. But at the end of the day, again, always been my favorite Beverly Hills Cop movie. Solid sequel. Uh, why it never gets talked about, you know, and again, I know that... Um, Someone recently on one of my live streams asked me, you know, what kind of, you know, what are movies out there that were successful when they came out that nobody talks about anymore? Besides a lot, Beverly Hills Cop 2, you know, it came out, it made money, it was successful, but now people just don't talk about it anymore. Why? I have no idea. I really don't have an idea as to why it does not get discussed more often. And it should, at least in my opinion. But anyway. So I hope that you guys enjoyed my review of Beverly Hills Cop 2. Again, these are actually being pre-recorded. Um, but the if my phone, if I can behave. But the next Eddie Murphy uh, movie review will be coming to America. Um, technically, Raw came out after that. Well, actually, Raw came out before this, if I'm not mistaken. Let me just look here quickly because Beverly Hills Cop 2 came out in May oh it actually came out okay I thought I don't know why I thought Delirious or Raw my bad came out it came out after it came out in December um but I guess it was filmed before because you don't hear people mention it but um so next movie wise will be coming to America so anyway I hope that you guys enjoyed my review of Beverly Hills Cop 2, and I will talk to you guys later. See you.